I would like to start with a story. Envision this. Low tide at Back Cove in Portland. 22 students and myself decked out in waiters. 10 minutes remaining before we head back to school after successful water quality testing. All of a sudden, I hear, Kate, we're stuck. <laughs> I turn around to see three students completely stuck in the mud flat, while two other students are desperately trying to dig them out. Panic sets in. I head out to the student closest to me and immediately start digging. We uncover two to three foot bristle worms everywhere. And that's when my student, who is terrified of worms, passes out in my arms. <laughs> I dig faster and I finally free her. She crawls to the beach. The other two boys are also free and they're crawling to the beach. We're exhausted, completely covered in mud, and can feel our hearts beating out of our chests. But we're safe, and in this chaos, we have become truly connected, both with each other and the world around us. To quote my hero, Dr. Sylvia Earle, with every drop of water you drink, every breath you take, you're connected to the sea, no matter where on earth you live. My kids and I might have been a little too connected to the sea <laughs> that day, but it hasn't stopped us from going back out to those mud flats to continue our sampling. The ocean has been the love of my life since I was a kid. I can vividly remember being captivated by her beauty and in awe of her expansiveness. She fuels my soul and allows me to connect to something so much deeper than myself. She has been one of my greatest teachers in life. It came as no surprise that I dedicated the first half of my career as a scientist in the field of marine biology. But as life would have it, a series of twists and turns led me down another pathway. Roughly 10 years ago, education found me and I've never left. Teaching became the second love of my life. When I first started a career as an educator, I remember thinking back to the most meaningful and lasting experiences I had when I was in school. A common theme quickly arose. Every single valuable memory consisted of being out in nature, connected, either doing field work as a group or independent research. That's because experiential learning is what solidifies and expands the content learned in the classroom. It allows for a deeper understanding of the material by encouraging critical thinking and problem solving, even if some of those problems involve getting stuck in the mud. Experiential learning allows for reflection. It helps pave the way for the real world. And it's how I knew that my idea, pe ideal pedagogical approach would be connecting the two loves of my life, the ocean and teaching. And with this connection, I would hopefully be creating stewards of our environment. At Baxter, I am fortunate enough to teach what I'm most passionate about, marine biology. I get to take 20 plus years of experience and knowledge and integrate that into my curriculum. We have a saying at Baxter that the real world starts now. I incorporate this message through experiential learning and immersing kids into the wonders and mysteries of the ocean. If you were to come into my classroom on any given day, you could find us dressed in waders, monitoring water quality at Back Cove as part of an ongoing climate change study. You could find us participating as citizen scientists, collecting data on invasive green crabs, or picking up trash in the community, contributing to an international database on marine debris. You could find us dissecting fishes in the Gulf of Maine, or you could find us identifying phytoplankton species under the microscope. We have fostered partnerships with the Gulf of Maine Research Institute, Blue Ocean Society, the Smithsonian, upsculpt and nationally known marine debris artists. We have also presented to surrounding school communities talking about the harms of plastic pollution. Through experiential, experiential learning, incredible connections have been built within my classroom and our community. It is through authentic connection we gain an understanding of the world around us, and that is how we prepare students for the real world. Experiential learning not only allows students to learn deeply and take action to better understand the world around them, it also fosters connection. Students are really good at connecting with each other through various social media platforms. 
but when it comes to connecting with each other in person, they struggle. I believe their neural pathways have accepted this false sense of connection as truth, and as a result, they tend to freeze up when faced directly with their fears. It's as if their technological connections mask their potential for real-world connections. Experiential learning coupled with the magic of the ocean is this beautiful natural tool that helps rewire their neural pathways to build true relationships. Experiential learning allows them to return to their inherent selves, feel joy, and let their guards down to play. Students find value in their voices and openness to build relationships, self-esteem, and leadership skills. And for me, that's one of the reasons why I love being an educator. To incorporate more experiential learning into schools, we need more partnerships between educational institutions, businesses, and organizations. We need to develop policies that integrate experiential learning at all educational levels, and educators need professional development to effectively implement these practices. When working with young people, I encourage you to bring them outside and embrace the beautiful connections that the natural world offers. I also envision a group of students of all ages talking to policymakers about how experiential learning has positively impacted their learning, their sense of self, and their ability to build connections. Over the years, my students and I have worked with the Gulf of Maine Research Institute to address plastic pollution, and we plan on discussing our findings with legislators this year. Maine has made progress by investing $6.6 .6 million in outdoor learning, but continued collaboration between policymakers and educators is essential to reflect on successful experiences and improvements. I might even invite them to put on a pair of waders and come trek with us while we do our field work at Back Cove. And I promise I won't get anybody stuck in the mud flats. <laughs> in closing, experiential learning is the pathway to joy, play, authentic learning, connection, community, and a deep understanding of the world around us. The ability to lead is born, which only cultivates a stronger sense of self. If my students can leave my classroom, not only as stewards of the environment, but as better versions of themselves, ready to tackle the real world, then I know I've been successful as an educator. One of my greatest hopes as an educator is that we work together to make these transformative experiential learning opportunities possible for all students. Just as every drop of water we drink or every breath we take connects us to the sea, every moment of genuine engagement and learning connects students to their true potential. Like the intricate web of marine life where each organism plays a crucial role, every experience and connection in classrooms help weave the fabric of a student's character, preparing them to thrive in the vast ocean of life. <laughs>